So your last step after you've done your research is creating your poster. And you'll find everything you need on this website. And if you have questions that your teachers can answer, my email is here and I will get back to you as soon as I get a chance if you email me. If you keep scrolling down, here's the presentation and the video that your teachers are showing you today and the link to get into Canva. There are three sources here to get pictures for your projects. Use these instead of Google Images for a few reasons. One, they're part of the public domain, so you don't have to add them to your work cited. If you use Google Images, chances are they are copyrighted and you need to add them to your work cited. And also, these images tend to be higher quality. Pexels and Unsplash, you don't have to log in. Pixabay, you may have to log in um, to get the highest quality photos, but if you don't need the highest quality, you don't need to log in. Uh, but this kind of goes through how to use Pixabay if you choose to use that. And then if you keep scrolling down, here are the things as a reminder that you need for your poster. So I'm going to go back and log into Canva. And the first thing you'll need to do is create an account. So you obviously would choose that you are a teacher or student and click sign up with your Google account. And then once your account is created, come back over to log in and log in with Google as long as you're logged into your Google on the background. You may have to choose your account uh, the first time you do that. So when you get here and you can see here's the poster that I created as an example, um, you can start a poster template and choose one here that, that is already created and then edit it the way you want it. But uh, to me, that was a little more difficult for this project. So I'm just starting from scratch. And if you want to be able to print out your poster on a standard sheet of paper, click on Use Custom Dimensions. And then a, custom, a standard sheet of paper is 8.5 by 11 inches. So just change pixels to inches. And then either make it 8.5 by 11 or 11 by 8.5 inches, uh, depending on if you want a horizontal or portrait, or landscape or portrait. And then click Design. So when you get your poster started, these are all the different things you can add. You can choose with a photo layout. These are kind of the grids you can choose from, and each one of these boxes is a new photo you can upload. That may be a little more challenging for this project, but you can choose to try that if you want and upload either um, the same photo or different photos for each one and put text on top. But to me, it seems almost easier um, just to start from scratch. So I would go to the background option, and then you can choose a solid background or choose one of the free pattern backgrounds or um, if you find a background photo somewhere else you can upload it so you see I have a couple here I have a brick wall I've uploaded and it's galaxy photo to find those just go to one of the stock photo sites like Pexels and you can search for a brick wall or search for stars or ocean or something you want to choose or you can just type in background or abstract and choose one from there um, just going to choose I think I'll just choose this here. Once you find one you want, you just click that you want to download it. And then you can cover over and get the largest size possible. This tells me it's complete. Um, so then you need to just make sure to know where you saved it. And I think mine just automatically saved to my Google Drive or my recent downloads here. So from there, if you go back to your poster, there it is. You can upload that image you just downloaded. Let's see if it's in my recent folder. There it is. So now it puts that image over here. It slowly uh, takes time to upload it. And once it is uploaded, you can just choose it. And so it takes a place over here then just adjust the size so it fills up your entire poster. And you can move it around as needed. So from there, you can add other things to your poster. This might be kind of hard to type on, even if I do a white text. So Sorry, let me go back and add text. You can choose one of the free ones here, like the combination of text, different fonts, or you can just start from scratch. So for my heading, maybe I want it to be change it to white so I can see it better. Oops. 
Oops. So I'm clicking too fast. So with my title, it's still pretty easy to read, but I can go through and you can move it around wherever you want it to be. Once you see your arrows, the grid lines pop up to help you get things centered. When you have it centered, you can go back and change the color. You can change the font to something else if you would like. And then if you still don't, oops, let me highlight it. To show, there it goes. If you still don't like um, having it by itself like this, you can add a background to it as well. And to do that, come over back to your side over here and choose elements and then choose shapes. And then whether you want an outline or just a rounded box, it creates it for you. And then you can change the color of that box if you to whatever you'd like it to be and change the size. So you see it's here, but I can't see my words now. So if you come over to arrange, you can move that shape backwards so it's behind your text and then edit things the way you want. And if you notice those grid lines popped up as well to let me know that my shape was centered with my text. Other things you can do over here under elements, there are free photos built into Pexels. You can search um, and see what they have available through Pex through here. Um, but if you notice, some of them are pro. So make sure you're choosing the free ones. So maybe if I wanted to add this one, and again, you can, change the size by just clicking and dragging, or if you double click on the image, then this, these new grid lines show up. So you can trim the photo to be exactly how you want it to be, and then hit enter and it saves it. Then again, you can still resize, you can change it so it's not straight if you would like. I'll put it back to straight as well. And again, gives you the grid lines and you can move it where you need it to be. Um, that's kind of the, how you start working through your poster. Other things through Elements, um, there are built-in illustrations you can choose from if you need icons and things like that. You can search for up here. There are other icons here as well. And the cool thing with, with these, let me get back to the icons. The cool thing with the icons, if you choose to use one of these, you can also change the color of that icon as well. And just like everything else, you can resize and move it to where you need it to be. You can change it so it's behind something instead of in front of it if you would like. Um, everything is very customizable. You can also, if you don't like something, uh, as long as it's highlighted, just hit the trash can to get rid of it. Uh, the last cool thing on here I want to show you is um, that you can create charts and graphs. So if you have statistics for your project that you want to include in your graph. You can choose a bar graph or a line graph or a circle graph and add that to your poster. And just like everything else, you can resize and change it. And where you, if you either double click the chart or click on data, here's where you can change it to be what you need. Maybe I only have three points of data, so I'm going to change two of them to zero. So now I just have three. And then maybe out of percentages, I had uh, maybe 50%. 30% and 20, let me change that back to the 30. So there's my new, my new graph. And you can also change the labels here as well um, to label on your graph. Um, again, if you don't like something, you can just hit the trash can to delete it. So once you have your poster the way you need um, and click through, make sure there's nothing else you want to add. You can add a layout, but that's again, not necessarily the best for this project. There are lines you can do if you want division lines or things like that to go between different elements of your poster and frames you can put around photos and around other things as well. Oh, sorry. That's just kind of like the grids. So anything you choose, make sure you're choosing things that are free. Um, you can add more text as needed. You can change your background again if you like. And anything you upload, either um, backgrounds, images um, of the helplines that you find, images you get from something like Pexels, all of those would be underneath under your uploads. And all you need to do to add them is just click them and arrange them to where you want them to be. So remember, you do need these things on your poster, the five important facts, four negative consequences, three strategies, two benefits to preventing it, and a place to get help, plus your definition. Once your poster has all of those things and images, you're ready to download it. So go back to Canva and go to download. 
Instead of the image files, choose a standard uh, PDF and go ahead and click download. And then once you download it, so it's easier to, so you don't lose it for one thing, and it's easier to add to Google Classroom, go ahead and upload it to your Google Drive. So have Google Drive open, find where you want to save it. I have a folder for advocacy campaign posters, and then click that you want to upload a file. Again, I think this should be under my recents. And there it is. I didn't give it a very good name, apparently. So once it is finished uploading, then you can go back to Classroom and add that file under the assignment for the poster. And remember, if you're doing your poster as a print poster, like we showed you in class, you will just add a comment saying that you created a poster and the market is done. But if you're doing this Canva poster, once you get it as a PDF and get it in your Google Drive, then you'll add the link to that here and click Turn In. If you have any questions, um, feel free to email me, but um, ask your teachers first. Thanks.